my pleasure to introduce our speaker today, my dear friend Larry Jennings. Uh, Larry serves the world professionally as a funeral director. Uh, people have uh, lost a family member or someone they dearly love, and they're really, you know, and it's happened to all of us, and we need someone we can talk to, and Larry's the perfect person. The beautiful thing about Larry is that he's authentic. His love is real, and compassion, and his compassion is real, and people can see that. So he's got a, a wonderful ministry in the world uh, with what he does helping people with that transitional period, helping the living with that transitional period. And uh, Larry, I specifically wanted Larry to speak today because um, to me Larry represents the, the spirit of Christ, the spirit of Christ's love. And I thought Larry would be a perfect speaker for our Christmas talk this morning. So Larry, come on up. I am so pleased to be here with you today. Um, as Bruce says, Christmas is a very special time of the year. Um, I didn't light a candle for this today, but I do want to mention before I speak that we had a wonderful Christmas gift last night. Um, I know that we have a deployment ending soon, as we just heard, um, but last night, uh, Michael Flynn, my son-in-law, was able to get off his carrier about two weeks early and fly in and surprise his family. Yeah. He just spent two tours in a row and um, he's been in the battle with ISIS and doing what he does best and serving and protecting our country. And, uh, my gratitude goes out to him and his family. So uh, my two granddaughters had a wonderful surprise last night when Daddy showed up. <laughs> we, we were there to spend it with him. It was great. But with Christmas coming, I know each of us can feel the excitement that's building. I certainly can. I have three small children that are with me. Well, not too small, 13 and 7 and 4. And Caroline, who we call the Princess of Avalar, <laughs> each morning asks me if it's time for Christmas yet. Is this the day? And she looks for the elf. He's hiding in the house and watching over everything. So we, we have a great time. I'm always honored to speak at the fellowship during the special season. Um, my inspiration always comes at different times of the year. And this past September, I was sitting where you are today. In fact, I can even see the seat I was in. I remember it. And Carol Ann was speaking and became my inspiration. She was speaking about Native American traditions and the, and the circle and the medicine wheel. And as she did that, and she led us into a meditation. I found myself just slipping away, which I often do, and I found myself dancing around a circle of fire in an Indian village at the edge of a river. Thank you. After a brief time, I left the circle and the drums, and I walked down a familiar pathway that I'd walked many times before. And I found myself being lifted by a gentle breeze. And I was placed inside of a teepee. This teepee is always above us. And as I went inside the teepee, I found myself with a warm and inviting fire in its center. And across from me, waiting for me, was my spirit guide, who I simply call Grandfather. He began to speak to me. And he told me always to listen to my heart, to listen to the voice inside. Within you, he said, you will always find your truth if you are truthful with yourself. He told me that he knew I was preparing for this talk and waiting for a sign as to what to speak about. He reminded me of the circle that we are all part of, and how the Master Jesus is a part of this circle, not just for Christians, but for all people. He told me to speak on this, so here I am. 
Grandfather continued to say that Jesus' life was an example for all of us to follow. And his teachings, which have been written, have become part of the fabric that is in each and every one of us. He told me that as our land became settled by so many, mainly from Europe, and from this, the Native American culture changed forever. Many of the people arriving were Christians, and with them they brought their teachings to the Native Americans. Many tribes listened to these, and as they spread the message of the Christ, they adapted his teachings and customs while maintaining a balance of their own spirituality. Grandfather then smiled at me, and I watched as he faded away. In the distance, I could hear the drumming, and I found myself back, seated in that chair here in the fellowship, grounded back to my physical body. In that moment, I became curious about how the Native Americans celebrated Christmas. And I began to do some research, and I studied some of their ways. I began by looking where my roots are in this lifetime, the Adirondacks of New York. Then this journey and this talk began. The Huron tribe, which we just talked about with the song that we had, was mainly based around Quebec. They traveled into what is now New York State by using the St. Lawrence River as a means of transportation. And working with other tribes that composed the Algonquin Nation, this is the area that I grew up in, and it is rich in history. As a child, I can remember exploring Cooper's Cave and Fort Edward, New York. There sits a cemetery called Union Cemetery. And within that cemetery, I have visited Jane McCrae's grave. Um, she was a young woman captured in, an Indi in a village and killed during a conflict in this area. And Cooper's Cave really does exist. I've been there, I've played in there from the last of the Mohegans. I've been to Fort William Henry and Fort Ticonderoga these tribes were greatly influenced by the French traders and later the British. They were a peaceful nation who were primarily farmers. And when the French arrived, they brought with them the Jesuits, who brought with them the master's teachings, including Christmas and according to their tradition, to celebrate the birth of the Christ they would build a small chapel in the woods of fir trees and bark in honor of the manger at Bethlehem. This became the stable where Jesus was born. Some traveled as much as two days to be there for this Christmas celebration. Their mangers constructed with a scene of animals, the fox, the buffalo, and the bear, they make a traditional tent of skins, and their nativity figures are all dressed as Native Americans. As I talk about the circle and, this, and how things come together, something that happened last night and happened today reminds me of how this all fits together. Um, I was talking to Susan last night as we were looking at some dates for a funeral for Ruth Ann. And she mentioned that Lloyd had found this beautiful Christmas carol written in the 1640s. And I said, wow. And he was going to play it today. I said, I already have that built into my talk. <laughs> <laughs> it amazes me how this just keeps the flow together. And some people that are here today that were a part of this talk are all here today. This well-known carol that we heard today, as, as he said, was written by a Jesuit priest. The carol was written in their language and later translated to French. 
and is still a much-loved carol by their people today. And I'm going to share some of the words with you. I know some of it was hard to understand, and I want, I want to share these words. It says, "'Twas in the moon of winter time, when all the birds had fled, that mighty, if I say this right, Katichi Manitou, before the light the stars grew dim, and wandering hunters heard the hymn, Jesus your King is born. Within a lodge of broken bark, the tender babe was found, a ragged robe of rabbit skin, and wrapped his beauty round. But as the hunter braves grew nigh, the angel's song rang loud and high. The earliest moon of winter time is not so round and fair as was the ring of the glory on the helpless infant there. The chiefs from far before him knelt with gifts of fox and beaver pelt. O children of the forest free, the holy child of earth and heaven is born for you. Come kneel before the radiant boy who brings you beauty, peace, and joy. It's a beautiful song. I love these words, and I love how these people adapted the story of the manger in a way that they could understand and visualize it. The carol also talks about the moon, which reminds me of the winter solstice. The winter solstice has always been a reverent period for the native people all over the world during the Christmas season. It's a time to offer gratitude, to honor family and ancestors, and follow a ritual observance of beliefs. This year in our own Virginia Beach, the winter solstice arrives this coming Wednesday, December 21st at 5.44 a.m. It is the longest night of the year and therefore the shortest day. The day has been celebrated for centuries by pagans, Wiccans, and many groups throughout the world, including our many Native Americans here in North America. Celebrations in the Americas long before the Europeans influenced it. Different Indian tribes associate different beliefs and rituals with it. For example, the Hopi tribe Tribal celebrations are dedicated to giving aid and direction to the sun, which is ready to return and give strength to new life. Their ceremony lasts for 20 days, includes prayer stick making, purification rituals, and a concluding rabbit hunt, feast and blessings. It is believed that our Christmas date was chosen to offset pagan celebrations that were already in place as new followers of Christianity spread their religion across the globe. Some believe that celebrating the birth of the true light of the world was set in motion by the December solstice because from that point onwards, the days begin to have more daylight. Yule was one of the lesser Sabbaths of the Wiccan year in a time when ancient believers celebrated the rebirth of the sun god and days with more light. This took place annually around the time of December solstice and lasted for 12 days. In reading an article about Native American Christmas, I was reminded that the giving of gifts has always been a part of their culture. There is a story that they share of the handsome brave who wears white buckskins and bring gifts to the children. His name is Handsome Fellow. Other gift bringers come at different times of the year, often in the summertime, but the gift bringing element is always a part of the Native American culture wherever they have a gathering. Looks for Buffalo, a Sioux spiritual leader, explained the meaning of Christmas to the traditional native people, and I want to share some of what he, of what he wrote down. 
He says that traditional American Indians are raised to respect the Christian star and the birth of the first Indian spiritual leader. He was a star person. He was an avatar. His name was Jesus. He was a Hebrew, a red man. He received his education from the wilderness and the master provided an educational formation with a holistic method. Looks for Buffalo writes, every day is our Christmas. Every meal is our Christmas. At every meal we take a little portion of the food we are eating and we are offering it to the spirit world on behalf of the four-legged and the winged and the two-legged. We pray not the way most Christians pray, but we thank the grandfathers, the spirit, and we thank the guardian angel. The Indian culture also believes in the traditions of the roving angel. The ways of the roving angels are actually the way the Indian people live. They hold out their hands and help the sick and the needy. They feed and they clothe the poor. They have high respect for the avatar because they believe it is in giving that we receive. These words are so familiar to us as we share our prayer each Sunday. Looks for Buffalo says, we are taught as traditional children that we have abundance. The creator has given us everything, the water, the air we breathe, the earth as our flesh, and our energy force, our heart. We are thankful every day. We pray early in the morning before sunrise to the morning star and then the evening star. We pray for our relatives who are in the universe. Someday will, they will come. We also pray that the Great Spirit's Son will live again. To the Indian people, Christmas is every day, and they don't believe in taking without asking. Herbs are prayed over before they are gathered, asking the plant for permission to take some cuttings, an offer of tobaccos made to the plant in gratitude. He says we do not pull it out by the roots, but cut the plant even with the surface of the earth so that another generation will be born in its place. The heritage these people share is so important to them, and they take great care that their ways may never be lost. On Christmas Day, they feed the elders, and they feed their families. On Christmas Day, they honor St. Nicholas. They explain to their children that to receive a gift is to enjoy it. And when that enjoyment is gone, they are to pass it on to another child so that they too can enjoy it. If a child gets a doll, typically that doll will change hands eight times a year from one child to another. Looks for Buffalo further explained. Every day is Christmas in Indian country. Daily living is centered around the spirit of giving and walking the red road. Walking the red road means giving everything you do to a spiritual experience. The more one gives, the more spiritual we become. And then he says, the Christ consciousness, the same spirit of giving that is present at Christmas is present every day. Many tribes who accepted Christianity over 400 years ago have a custom to dance on Christmas Eve and Christmas, where gifts are offered at the manger with the wise men being replaced by the chiefs representing the great nations. These and many other stories can be told as they accept the ways of the master yet kept alive their own beliefs. I thought about that circle that grandfather spoke of, and I thought about as our world and country 
is going through struggles and confusion. And we strive to understand, understand and accept the beliefs of other religions and other people's philosophies. My spirit guide says that we must not look for the differences in people, but rather we must look for what is alike. We must remember that we are each part of a circle, and within that circle is all the world religions and beliefs, including Master Jesus, Master Buddha, Master Muhammad, and the moon and the sun. Our Christmas is celebrated by all as we honor Master Jesus and his birth into our world. One of the things I was reminded of while working on today's talk was that the Master's experience is our experience. His life from birth to his physical death was a road map for each of us to follow. He showed us how to forgive. He showed us how to accept. His life showed us how to love one another unconditionally. He was our teacher, and through understanding his life, we can better live ours. <clears throat> our expression of purpose that is in our bulletin each week is an extension of these beliefs, and I'd like to share a part of that with you today. We are an interfaith spiritual community that honors each individual's path and the core teachings of all world religions and spiritual masters which hold love, light, and joy to be the nature, character, and manifestation of God. Our ideal is to express Christ consciousness which means we honor the presence of God within each of us in all creation. We support one another in our individual and collective realization and expression of Christ consciousness as embodied in the life and teachings of Jesus and other spiritual masters. What is Christ consciousness? To me, personally, it simply means the presence of God and the Christ within myself. It is about going within through meditation and in the still of the moment, finding that voice. This voice I hear and listen to is connected to me by the source through the opening of my crown chakra or being guided often through the seven terrace meditation we offer here every Sunday. When we arrive at the top of the mountain, we enter our temple. It is also about the unseen presence that is constantly guiding us in the world that we live in. Christ consciousness is within us and all around us. It is the air we breathe, the thoughts we have, and the love that encompasses all that is. This beautiful presence guides us, protects us, and opens our soul's desire to experience the love that our Creator has for each and every one of us. As I and each of you go about our everyday lives, we don't slow down to listen and remember who we truly are. Remember, we are expressions of our source, not separate, but rather one with the Mother, Father, God, and we are one with each other. If we allow ourselves time each day to meditate and go within, the reality of our true selves will wake up every cell in our body and you will have the understanding and the peace that all the masters want you to have. Take the time to climb the mountain that is in the painting next to me 
And notice as you look at the meadow, the pathway circles the mountain. As you walk this circular pathway through the seven gardens, your soul will connect and open up to a new experience, allowing yourself to grow. Each garden is a new experience, and I personally find peace and understanding as I walk this path and I get closer and closer to the top. At the top, you reach your temple, as you can see in the painting, the white light that connects this mountain to the Christ consciousness and the Mother, Father, God we are all part of. Paul Solomon gave us this wonderful gift with the Seven Terrace Meditation. And I encourage each of you to come early before each service and experience. Allow it to become part of your Sunday routine. I do understand that it does not resonate for everyone. So find what works for you. Do whatever it takes to discover yourself and your own connection to the Christ Consciousness. Often, I and many of you also, simply make the connection by spending time in nature. I grew up in the mountains enjoying communing with all nature that surrounded me. It was here that I came to realize and understand that every flower, every tree, every stone has a spirit of its own. Moving here 25 years ago brought me to the edge of the ocean where I enjoy its rhythmic waves meeting the shoreline. My times on the beaches here brought me an abundance of peace and tranquility. Going back to nature reminds me that Jesus was born in a stable surrounded by animals and was brought gifts from the wise men who followed a star. The gifts they brought were from Mother Earth, gold, incense, and mirth. The shepherds were in the fields tending the sheep when an angel appeared and told them to go to Bethlehem and find the newborn king. The master was a carpenter using wood from the trees his connection to Mother Earth was strong. And there are many, many more examples I can think of. The connection with Mother Earth, the elementals, the animals, the angels, and all the masters is a powerful one. And we must remember that they are each a part of the circle, working together in harmony with one another. They, like us, are not separate, but are truly one, and with each other and with each other an understanding of this can bring peace to ourselves and our world. Several weeks after sitting in the fellowship and having the experience with grandfather in the teepee, I had another experience here in this room that I want to share with you. It was during the service, and Cynthia was serving as pastor, as she is today. And I was standing near the podium, and we were singing the great invocation. As I held the hands of the people next to me, I looked to the back of the church and su was surprised to see one of our members in the circle, not standing where I usually see them. Today, he's right where he normally is. We are creatures of habit. I can always find Bruce and Marty right there. I know Jerry's not here today because I could look here and he'd be sitting right there. And I know that Sarah is always here with a smile, always warms my heart. The person I'm speaking of normally sits in another section of the church and always stands in another place in our circle relative to where he sits. This person was not supposed to be in the circle in the back in front of Lloyd and the sound equipment. Because of this, I immediately took notice. This person had recently left Virginia Beach 
And he had gone to be with family, he was having some health experiences, went back to visit some of his grandchildren. And I was saddened by this because I hadn't had a chance to say goodbye, and I knew I would miss him at our Ascended Masters meetings and waiting for him to come back. We regularly attend that together. And at the end of our song, we went back to our seats, and I was looking forward to getting a hug from this dear friend. But I looked again, and he was gone. Then came a familiar sensation that tells me that there is more going on than what I can see. I closed my eyes, and again, I was told that he was gone from Virginia Beach and had decided to visit us spiritually, to be with us in our circle, and just to say hello. <laughs> he told me that he was still in this world, which I was thankful for, and that he could travel to anywhere he chose with his thoughts and in his dreams. I tell you this experience to express how our circle works. Our circle that we form each Sunday is inclusive of so many. Those of us here and those of us that we cannot see. Embracing all the masters and embracing all of our different beliefs and showing we are not separate but rather one with the source. It is this belief that allows me to explore our entire universe by simply closing my eyes and going within and choosing to see the unseen world that we are part of, just as my friend had done this past Sunday. He visited us and revealed himself to me. What a wonderful gift. My thoughts have often went to him after that, and I was surprised and full of joy when he returned and celebrated Thanksgiving with us here at the fellowship. And Francis, I wish you a beautiful Christmas, as I know you will celebrate many more Christmases with us and that you will always be part of our circle, be it here or if you are somewhere else. Thank you. As today's service comes to a close, we will form our circle. As we close that circle, look into the faces of everyone here. Then close your eyes and visualize our circle with the Master Jesus, the Buddha, and all the ascended masters in our circle with us. I will look for grandfather and I will look for all my spiritual guides to be with me. Together we are powerful with our thoughts, sending waves of healing throughout our country and our world. These waves of healing from our circle know no boundaries and spread joy to everyone it touches. When I look around this church, I see each of you as my family and an extension of myself. I also see the light of the energy it travels to each of us in unending spirals. Today I'm seeing beautiful purples and reds and yellows and greens. And Bruce, I'm pleased to see a violet light over you as it sends that healing ray down to you. Seeing this allows me to understand the oneness of all life, which we often talk about, but we don't always feel and understand. Every Christmas, I take some quiet time during the day to meditate, and I give thanks to Jesus for coming into our world and bringing us his teachings. His life on this planet was a wonderful gift from our Creator, to show us how we can live our lives in peace and harmony. 
embrace this beautiful soul and all he brought to us. Take time this Christmas to light a candle in honor of his birth and then meditate and look within yourselves and begin with these words. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. Don't be afraid to embrace the loving presence that resides in each of us. And this Christmas season, look within and discover the love and the peace and share this with everyone in your circle. Merry Christmas and thank you. Uh -huh.